Welcome to the Be Real Podcasts with your host, Bobby Maximus and Joe Sabula. Now, here's the deal. We want to give you a diet plan. We want to teach you how to eat, especially if you're in your 40s. I'm 46 years old. Joe is 46 years old. And as the years have went on, things have had to change a little bit. And so, Joe, today we're going to break down like some things you can do to eat in your 40s. But you're watching this, you're not 40 years old. These rules still apply to you. And I would make the argument that the earlier you adopt this style of eating, Joe, the better. And I would even say this is almost a, if I could go back and do it all over again, this yes. is how I would do it from the start. A hundred percent. Now here's, here's the basis of this. When you're young, when you're in your 20s, when you're in your 30s, you can get away with more. The college kid can drink on Thursday and Friday night. The college kid can eat fast food. The college kid can eat candy and chips and things like that and still maintain a respectable physique. I'm always seeing these kids that are eating for gains and they're just <laughs> sucking down McDonald's or sucking down yeah. Taco Bell. They're sucking down KFC with seemingly no issue. But there's no eye on long-term health and there's no eye on what, you know, how things are going to look in your 30s or your 40s. You've just got more. You said this in an earlier podcast. I can't remember how you put it, but you said you just have more margin for error or you exactly. have more leeway yeah. or something like that. And something we were talking about just earlier today was, uh, you know, people who get into the four or five, 600 pound range and that, that doesn't happen overnight. And no. I did the math on it. And it's like, if you overate 300 calories a day, every day for 15 years, you would weigh over 400 pounds. Yes. And so I feel like if you're 20 years old, you haven't had time for all that excess to really become an issue yet. But when you're 30, when you're 40, now you've got, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of eating habits. That's where a lot of this extra weight comes from. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a slow, steady build. So yeah, you don't, yes. you don't wake I, up. I, I, yeah. And on the, on the, 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 the way early end of it, like, yeah, you're not going to see if, if I over ate 300 calories, uh, you know, as a 21 year old college kid, I wouldn't know you wouldn't step on the scale and yeah. see that the next day. But if you did that every day for 30 years, you sure as hell would. Yeah. You're going to be in a hole. And like I said, yeah. you don't just miraculously wake up fat. Like you don't go right. to bed shredded and then have a bad, <laughs> I always use Christmas as an example. Christmas made me fat. I'm like, well, no, one day of the year where you overate or you had yeah. some pie or you had some cake or you had some candy or you had a couple of adult beverages, that's not why you look how you look. Like you built this over years. Yeah. And slowly so, and purposefully, whether you yeah. think so or not. Now, a couple of things, just a couple of general rules. As you get older, you have to pay attention to your caloric consumption more. Yeah. Now, it's not that your your body necessarily just burns less or it's not necessarily that your body processes calories differently. But generally in your 20s uh, and, and even in your early 30s, Joe, you're more active. You're doing more stuff. You're just burning through more in the day. As we get older, we tend to get a little more sedentary. Like a 45-year-old, the thing that's killing 45-year-olds is sitting at a desk or sitting in a chair. Yeah. Eight, nine, 10 hours a day. It said on Sunday, you're not going for a hike. You're not playing mm -hmm. sports. You're not engaging in like a rec league. Like when you were in college, you probably did. Well, what are, what are like the big three? Intramural basketball, <laughs> intramural water polo, intramural, like whatever, right? You're active. You, you know, competed at Taekwondo at a really high level yeah. in university. I was wrestling. Like, you're just doing more activity. In your 40s, you're wearing a suit. You're sitting at a desk. You're just not getting the physical activity in. So you've got to be more cognizant of your calories because yeah. you're not creating the same deficit from exercise. And we always say there's two ways to go about losing weight, and that's to burn more calories or to eat less calories. And as you get older, as you said, you get you get comfortable. It's not a bad thing. I mean, you're working your whole life to be able to pay the bills, to pay the mortgage, like to be comfortable. And here you are in your 40s. And not only are you a little bit more comfortable, a little less motivated, you know, un uh, unless you're recently divorced and have to go out and press all the babes, you're probably happy. You're good where you're at. Uh, but also because you did intramural sports in college, because you were rough on yourself when you were a kid, 
your knees hurt, your back aches. And so that even demotivates you further. So don't count on doing more when you're in that position. We really got to focus on the other side of the equation as much as possible. Yeah. And so that's why you have to worry about calories because you're mm-hmm. not having the output. And that's where one of those margin for errors or leeway thing you talked about, Joe, if you're running around all day and you're burning thousands of calories, like you can eat however you want. You don't yeah. need to pay attention and you're going to maintain that six pack. But if you're sitting all day, oh yeah, calories are going to matter. Now for your average 40 year old, I want to stick you somewhere between 1800 and 2000 calories a day. And I get that that's not a ton of food, but guys, ladies, you're sitting all day unless you're exercising. And I mean exercising hard in the gym every day for an hour. And unless you're doing your 10,000 steps a day, that's the most calories you can consume without putting on weight. And so you're going to have to learn to eat between 1800 and 2000 calories a day. And that, and that's, that's going to be the cost of uh, the cost of goods sold. That's going to be what you can consume and what you can burn. Exactly. And, and I think there's really two strategies to figuring this calorie thing out. And the first one is the the least exciting and that's actually calorie counting using an app plugging things in, doing the math and just trying to figure out. And and I always recommend that people do that for at least a week, two weeks to see how it works. But the other thing then becomes different strategies for eating. And this is where you can go down the, the rabbit hole on whether you should be in a ketogenic diet, whether you should do vegan diet, you know, whether you, you need to get into intermittent fasting and what is the appropriate window. And then do you do carb backloading or like, should you be avoiding seed oils and all that stuff? Like there's a lot of different ways that you can get stuck. But I think strategically, for example, eating smaller meals and just saying, I don't have to eat until I'm satiated. I just have to eat enough food at breakfast to get me to lunch and then just eat enough food at lunch to get me to dinner, you know, and then eat enough food at dinner that I'm not going to be going to bed starving hungry. And if you did that, I mean, you're talking that 1500 to 2000 calories, pretty easy right there, just without even counting. Now there's a couple of things you said that I want to address because I think the big thing is you mentioned the vegan diet, you mentioned ketogenic, you, you mentioned seed oils, and listen, everyone's talking about seed oils lately. <laughs> so so RFK Jr. He 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 you know he's he's going to save America, he's going to make America healthy again, and I really like the idea of this Joe. So I don't want to slam the guy. I really like the idea of holding corporations accountable. I really like the idea of using better quality ingredients in our food. I think that's important for health and wellness overall. But the other side of the coin is it's not seed oils in your McDonald's because that's the big thing, right? Like we're going to make McDonald's use tallow again. Uh, An American should be able to enjoy fast food without worrying about, okay, and it's not the red 42 in your Fruit Loops. Like, I want to feed my kid Fruit Loops every day, and I don't want him to be poisoned. I'm just going to put this out there. You shouldn't be eating at McDonald's anyway. You shouldn't be eating Fruit Loops. Like, you shouldn't be eating processed foods. Seed oils and red 42 or yellow 49 are the least of your concerns. Here's a novel idea. No more Taco Bell, no more McDonald's, no more Pizza Hut, no more Little Caesars, no more Kellogg's anything. Like it's yeah. just it's just really that simple. If you're that worried about seed oil, don't go eat fast food in the first place. It reminds right. me, Joe, of, I remember I was in McDonald's and someone made a comment, oh, big guy, you look, look, you look like you're pretty strong. Like how much protein should I eat? And I'm like, uh... Man, I don't know. You're, you're at McDonald's. Like, I, I don't know if like, protein so you, we should be having to talk about macronutrients, but fine. Like, I'll go there. You know what I mean? But if yeah. you're going to McDonald's, you're not going there for nutrition and you're not worried about having tallow. So that's like something I want to address and where people really screw up. And this is so true for the 40-year-old population is you don't have a handle on calories. You don't even mm-hmm. know how to count calorie. You haven't exercised in 10 years. But now you're worried about whether you should be keto or intermittent fasting or vegan. And honestly, that is way above your pay grade right now. Well, and there's I, stuff oh, that there's stuff that pulls those all into the same bucket, right? Because yep. if you're vegan, if you're ketogenic, if you're doing the paleo diet, if you're even doing the the uh, uh, what's the one the the Mediterranean diet that all the yep. doctors like, 
all of these diets have this in common where they're cutting out all that stuff anyway. You're yeah. not eating Fruit Loops on well, a ketogenic that's, that's, I'm diet. I'm going to tuck you off. Yeah. That's if you're on a genuine vegan diet, Joe. Right, that's if right. you're having broccoli and cashews and macadamia nuts. If you're filling your face with Subway veggie sandwiches <laughs> and, and beyond meat, like that's not the vegan diet well, we're we, talking. We've always said a, a vegan cookie is still just a cookie. Like we yes. get that. So it's not like you yeah. can eat as many vegan cookies as you want and not worry about negative health impacts. It's not – that's a treat. That's not something you're eating because you have a specific goal, right? Now, I'm, I'm talking about what vegans did in the 60s or 70s where you're actually <laughs> yeah. eating like real fruits and vegetables and nuts and you're pairing rice with beans and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But even even all that, Joe, if you can't handle the simple, simple task of knowing what a macronutrient is – yeah. Knowing that there's four calories in a gram of protein or nine calories in a gram of fat, like you need to start paying attention to your calories before we even look at anything. Because yeah. most 40 year olds, you know, it's plaguing you. It's not your seed oil. It's not your red 42. It's not some weird chemical. It's the fact you're 30 pounds overweight. It's the fact that you're five foot 10 and you're 220 pounds. And at five foot 10, you sh- probably should be a buck 70 or a buck 75. Like you look at Jason Statham and we hold him up a lot as like the ideal male physique, but dude is 5'10", 5'11", 170 pounds. So you walking around at 200, you are way too heavy. And you lose that weight, regardless of what, you know, what you're eating, you're going to feel a lot better and you're going to look a lot better. 100%. We talk about sore knees, sore back. Well, yeah, you're carrying around an extra 30, 40, 50 pounds. What do you think? Problematic. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the first thing. Let's get a handle on your calories before we worry about any of this minutia. Yep. Now, the second thing, and this is where I actually support the Maha Make America Healthy, you know, again, movement, is you should be worried about chemicals. Now, you should have started this when you were a baby, yep. right? Like if you're a parent out there and you're feeding your kid, give them an egg instead of Cheerios. Like that's yeah. not rocket science. You should have started this earlier But now here we are. And every chemical that you're exposed to that's a carcinogen, every chemical you're exposed to that affects your gut, like the the ulcerative colitis you're developing now in your 40s, the table for that was set in your 20s. Now, you can undo some of the damage and you can slow the tide by eating healthier, Joe. But that's where you said you made a good point at the start of the podcast. You got to go back and retrospect. Like this is when I was 20. I really would have paid a lot more attention if I knew what I knew now. Yeah. I would have paid a lot more attention to the chemicals that I was putting in my body, right? Like mm-hmm. if I had a Coca-Cola when I was 20, I didn't care whether it was the Mexican Coke or the regular Coke and whether it had cane sugar or I didn't. But I wish I would have because it would have affected me now. I always yeah. say it like this. Your health when you're 30, that was affected by what you did when you were 20. Your health in your 40s, that's by what you did in your 30s. So, guys, you got 50s, 60s, 70s. Some of you are going to have 80s and 90s to go. You got to get a handle on these chemicals. So, no more red 42, no more seed oils, no more like, like I want you to eat as clean as humanly possible. And what's that rule, Joe? You got to murder it and cook it over a fire or you got to pluck it from a tree. That's what you're allowed. No processed food whatsoever. Yeah, I agreed. And I, and I, you know, bring it in here. Let me talk directly to our audience. You are not beholden to these companies. Nobody is yeah. putting a gun to your head saying you have to eat Fruit Loops. You can make a different choice. And, and if everybody did that, they'd stop making the Fruit Loops because it wouldn't well, sell anyway. Yay, capitalism. And here's, here's one more thing. And I kind of want to end on this, Joe, because I really got to go after these people. You just, and, and I, I said it earlier, but I, I want to make it clear again. You can't have processed food anymore. You're Mm -hmm. just done. And the reason Americans are fat and Europeans aren't, if you want to, now there are a lot of fat Europeans too, but if you want to make that argument, it isn't because they use watermelon juices coloring in their Fruit Loops. The reality is their consumption of Fruit Loops period is way less. So to make it real clear, when I go into Whole Foods, which is supposed to use happy ingredients- I'm under no false pretense that their organic gummy bears are good for me. 
I'm under no false pretense that their Panda Puff cereal that don't use artificial dyes are any better than Fruit Loops or Lucky Charms. Like you shouldn't be having that in the first place. Now, I want to tell you, if you are going to, you know, eat Fruit Loops, make sure you import them from Europe because they're going to be better for you. But you shouldn't be eating their ultra processed food. Like I don't want yeah. you having them, period. What What's wrong with an egg and avocado? What is wrong with a piece of steak? What's wrong with a piece of chicken? What's wrong with some like real stone ground oats? Like I need you to stay away from chemicals at all costs, but understand going down this road of like, oh, well, this fast food company uses a slightly better ingredient. It's still a fast food company. Hear me yeah. out on that. You shouldn't be eating it. You can't do that anymore. And I'll just add on, like, everything needs to line up here. So don't be complaining to me about, you know, Red Dye 42 while you're puffing cigarettes and drinking a six-pack a night. Like, you've got bigger yeah, fish to fry you're, anyway. <laughs> you're, you're, you're vaping because you figure yeah. that's healthier than cigarettes. Like, right. you just can't. Guys, like, like, just please stop. Make sure you're strict. And if you want to see a rapid change, especially in your 40s, you got to be strict. Again, you don't yeah. have the leeway. You're not the 20-year-old that looks at a dumbbell and kind of cleans up their diet a little bit, and then all of a sudden you're miraculously fit. But you've got to be dialed. We're going to start with your calories. You're going to be 1,800 to 2,000 a day, and you're going to have to stick to that. You're going to have to count. You're going to have to measure. You might have to weigh. And then the second thing is no more processed food. If you do those two things, and I know what you're thinking, it can't be that simple. That's the only two things I have to do. If you did that, you will drop that 30 pounds in two months. You will 100% change your life. You'll be more energetic. You'll have a better sex drive. You'll be happier. You'll be healthier. Your doctor will marvel at the changes in your blood. Like this is the answer. So get it done.